I am unashamed. What about you? So, Jay's in between um, podcasts, we were you were telling us about your foray into <laughs> into buying lingerie for Missy. Well, Is this like a long time ago? When you what could have possessed you to say, I think I'll look into women's apparel? Well, I would have been what, married about three uh, years, so you got to, how far are we going back So your here? motives were good. You, you wanted to help out. I mean, I thought, we're, we've done this the right way. We waited till we got married. We're experiencing God-sanctioned sexual activity between a married couple, so... I just, you know, after a couple of years, I was running out of gift ideas. And so I thought, you know what? I'll get her some lingerie. Yeah. I just didn't. I didn't. I didn't I'm not recommending that. I, I was telling y'all before, this was a DED. Don't ever do. Don't ever do. Because what they yeah. didn't realize is when somebody likes me, like looking if like you'd me. You would have made one phone call and said, Dad, i tell you what. <laughs> It occurred to me. I, you, it, I just said, "Ho, ho, whoa, whoa, okay. I said, "Son, some, 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 some soil you do not want to stand on." So I walk into this, uh, you know, Victor- you're out of your league on that. I go, in, I go into the Victorian Secret, you know, and I felt a little awkward when I walked in. The Victorian Secret, and uh, you know, I just didn't realize. I was like, "These," I feel like people are staring at me. <laughs> And well, they were for good reason. Yeah, yeah I wasn't oh, yeah. feeling that. That was happening. Yeah. <laughs> and you're surrounded by mannequins. You got people are, in the back of the store going, "What? What did he say? Who he say he was?" I mean, that? yeah, they're, they're documenting. Somebody me. was monitoring the camera. Oh, so I you felt know. like at any moment while I was at that store that there were just going to be cops coming out of every direction and it was all a trap but <laughs> <laughs> what's the problem is you're right out you're looking at stuff because you're thinking well my wife i'm doing this for my wife right but you're looking at mannequins and, and they're wearing the apparel so all of a sudden i started feeling kind of creepy <laughs> <laughs> i felt creepy when you told me that you're gonna do something creepy <laughs> so i finally decide on what i'm getting and i get up there and i i have it there and she's looking at me, and it's just awkward. It's not like I thought, why well, have a store where you're selling stuff where a guy like me comes in and you're making me feel way more uncomfortable? <laughs> Don't you have a line? Didn't they say, okay, when some weird looking bearded guy comes in here, here's what you want to do to make him feel better? Right. No, didn't happen. She was like, get out of here, creep. <laughs> So then the payoff was I give it to Missy and she's like, Why would you buy me lingerie? You, <laughs> so you don't did- think I'm I'm not capable of doing that myself? <laughs> so I'm like, Okay, so not only did I feel like a creep, look like a creep, now my wife is saying, You're just a creep. <laughs> <laughs> the the payoff was supposed to be, oh look, you bought me lingerie. Never never saw that outfit. Yeah. <laughs> so Jason, yeah. by the way, just in passing, I mean so after that, did you did you learn from that lesson? Yes, I've never even I don't even look at right. that store. Oh, yeah. I don't want anything to do with it. And evidently, people like me are disqualified from that price. Well, it's, it, Lisa and I, I hadn't been in a mall in a long time. We were I think we were in California, and we just we went to eat at a restaurant there. It was happened to be at a mall. We had a little bit of time, so we're just walking around the mall. I hadn't been in one forever, and of course it's COVID, so. Like you, only so many people can be in a store at, at one time, at least in California, I guess. And so, the, so you're looking, and there's lines. People are waiting in line to go into a store, and I was just, I was looking, I was thinking, really? I mean, like you really got to want some. Well, guess where the longest line was? Victoria's yeah. Secret. Yeah. I mean, it it went around around the corner, and I said, people, not only are they shopping for the lingerie, they're waiting in line to shop for the lingerie. Well, the guy who came down here, the local redneck, he said, <clears throat> "In blood sucking nets getting y'all." I said, "Yeah, they're getting us. That's it. They're just they're just all in their face all day long, blood sucking gnats." <laughs> so he said, "That sounds bad." He held up a bottle and said, "Victoria's Secret." <laughs> he said, "See this stuff right here." <laughs> And I, I said, what, what, what is that? Of course, the bugs are all, all over us. They're doing, we're doing like this. I'm like, what, what is that? And he said, you put this stuff on, 
And you, they, they will leave. The blood suckers will leave. <laughs> you want to hear something? And I crazy? said, look, I said, I'm gonna try anything. I'll try it once. I said, but don't tell anybody you ever saw me put this on. <laughs> so I got me a little dab on. I put it on. The blood sucker gnats left me alone. Ooh. Look, I need something you. in that Victoria's Secret. <laughs> Uh, I don't know whether Victoria found out about it, but <laughs> well, that is the secret. it was that's the secret. But whoever it well, may look, be, you want to hear something crazy? <laughs> this gets rid we of have blood sucking the gnats. secret of Victoria. I've known. I've you. got a bottle of it in the forehead. Oh, oh, I know it's it's awkward because <laughs> look, when people get in, does it have like a underwear model on the on the front of it? No, I've had people get in his rig and see that bottle and say. Is that yours? And I'm like, no, that's my dad's. Which you talking about creepy. Creep alert. Oh, creep yeah. alert. Like, he uses that. I was like, well, he does it for the gnats. And they go, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But here's what's funny, Phil. This now year, Phil's secret. This year, I'm in Alabama, a million miles away from here. And when I went metal detecting, I told y'all about the story. Oh yeah, we we got lost. In and the- look, there were gnats everywhere. And the guy who I've never met before. By the way, the dictionary calls him no see him. All right. Well, this guy. No, no see him. It's says, actually a word, no see him. Yeah. He and, said, and it's those gnats. He says, do you want some spray for the gnats? I'm like, yeah, what you got? And guess what he pulls out? Victoria's Secret. Victoria's Secret. That's it. It's no I said, here's the problem that I have with this. And he looked up at me like, why would you have a problem with this? I said, the problem is that my mind is going to you going in that store <laughs> to buying that. And I had a really bad experience there when I was I young had and a bad experience. I, I sent Dan. Yeah. Well, there you <laughs> well go. that wasn't creepy. So look, I, I think the biggest problem is, is you have this misunderstanding between husbands and wives that I think God created for you to work out and become stronger through conflict and communication. Because <laughs> look, I'll, on my way back from Colorado, I just come back. And we're, everything's going pretty well, but all the problem, I'll, I'll tell you the end problem. And then I'll go back and tell you the story that led to this comment that my, my wife said, do what? I said, well, when I looked at the woman's body type, I knew right then she said, what are you looking at a woman's body type for? I was like, babe. So now I'll tell you the story <laughs> that led to that comment. So I leave my computer, my laptop, in the airplane, but we only had a small distance of time to make our next flight to Monroe. And we hurriedly got there. So when I got there, I, I'm going to get out. We had like five minutes before we start boarding. I get out. I was going to get out my computer and I look and realize, Oh, I put it in uh, in the seat in between the seat. So I go up, Missy's like, go, go, go tell them right there. There it said assistance or whatever. And I was like, look, I left my computer on a plane on a plane it was in terminal c we're in e and so he said well let me call him he called him nobody's answering he's like can't help can't help you sorry so i went over to miss i was like nobody answered and she said well you don't have time to make it and i said i'm going for it (laughs) so i took off running (laughs) wide open down the stairs down the escalator excuse me i mean i get on the shuttle i go to see i'm occasionally looking at my clock because that you know you have 15 minutes they give you up until 15 minutes to get back you're in atlanta i'm in i'm in dallas Dallas, okay and so i go up there to the gate that i originally landed on in c and i see the crew that that i was with on the plane so I was like, great. Well, she's there's another woman making an announcement saying this gate has been changed. You all need to move. So I'm like, well, I don't want to interrupt her because there's like everybody's looking. And so I asked the stewardess, I said, look, I left my computer on that plane. And she did. She did. She just completely ignored me. She was looking through me. I looked back. <laughs> no. OK, so the woman <laughs> making the announcement, I said, look, I, le- I left my computer. And she said, sir, go over to this station and I'll help you later. I was like, but I don't have time. I need that. I need to get on that plane. Well, when she she said, go to the station. Well, I looked over on the station and I see my computer. Oh, it's laying there. Laying there. And so I said, never mind. I see it. I'm going to get that. Well, I had it's, you know, roped off. And she said, do not touch that computer. I haven't identified it yet. <laughs> I thought. I just did. <laughs> 
But she said, do not touch that. So I'm telling my wife this. I said, then I looked at her body type and realized that if I grab this computer, she's never going to catch me. <laughs> but Missy, forget the story. She's like, what were you doing looking at her body type? I was like, because I was thinking I'm fixing to take off running. She's not going to catch me. Yeah. I mean, I didn't mean anything other than that, but forget the whole story. It's like, what was you doing? It reminded me, Phil, when you were uh, squirrel hunting that time, you know, and the game warden snuck up on you, and you looked at him, and the cowboy beats on, yep. and you thought, nope. Nope. <laughs> what I said was when he said, I looked around, and like that, I heard a stick break. I looked around, and he's about 50 yards. He said, he said, hold it, son, game warden. I said, that's what I thought. And the, and the race was on. I grabbed that computer and just took off at a dead run. And the woman is saying, bring that back. I thought, how dumb is this? It's my computer. Right. The same thing, Jay. I've left stuff before, and it's like, they're like, so, well, how can you prove this yours? I said, because it's mine. <laughs> I mean, why would I come up here? You yeah. have a, a random wallet or computer, yeah, and exactly. I'm missing one. I mean, so did you take it and run? I took it and run. <laughs> yeah, I had two instances on that trip that made me really just oh, that frustrated. That was one. Yeah. The others, when we go up to security, same thing happened. As soon as we go in, it's Missy, Mia, and me, and the security guy, sir, wait your turn, because they. He's looking like you're yeah. not you're not with them. <laughs> Usually she says he's with me, but she just didn't. So I just waited in the back. <laughs> they did their thing. I stepped up. He's he's I was like, yep, Robertson. <laughs> but when I said that, he said, sir, because I had a you have to wear the mask. Right. He said, Your your mask is not up to standard. And I said, Excuse me? Because <laughs> I was made the Robertson comment. Yeah. He said, the mask is not up to the standard. <laughs> I was thinking, I mean, I had the little white, you know, it's white on one side and blue. Yeah. So I took it off. I took it off and he said, you have it on backwards. I was thinking, <laughs> what? <laughs> I said, I have, I said, well, let me just turn it around. He's like, it's not up to standard. I said, do you have another one? I was kind of being sarcastic. He says, yes. So he pulls out a mask. I kid you not. That was the identical a replica of the one I had, <laughs> blue on one side yeah, yeah, and just... white on the other, and he handed it to me. I put it on, and I thought, what is going on? So then I just couldn't keep my mouth shut because I took about five feet, and I said, that was my wife that you saw before, <laughs> and he was just looking at me. I mean, but he didn't care. He didn't care. <clears throat> well, my theory is, Jace, that, that the pandemic, because it, Air travel was, was not great anyway, but it has now turned people into that. I mean, like... I think the people who work there all of a sudden think that they're like the Gestapo. That's what it is. Or, I mean, it's... They have this power. It's bad. You know, they, they keep talking about all these fights they're having on planes and stuff. It's because the, every, the tensions yeah. are so high. I mean, you go through that. I mean, that was just one trail. So I mean, look, I'm not embellishing this in the least. There was... It was the exact replica. I just had it on backwards. Which yeah. I'm like, you know, you know the old redneck joke. When you need a new pair of underwear, you just turn them inside <laughs> out. I'm sure I probably turned it around after I thought, you know, it's been a while since I've been wearing it this way. Let's let's turn this puppy around. That's right. But they just like gate agents. Everybody, it's just like the, this terrible attitude. Flight attendants usually people are typically friendly because you're paying a lot of money yeah. to fly. I mean, you're, you're, you know, their business, you're, you're the customer. You're the, you're supposed to be the right, you know, right here, but it's, it's not good. It's been bad. In fact, it's gotten so bad for me, Jay's, that I've gotten to where I've just taken to driving. You I, can't give, you can't give too many common people power. That's right. <coughs> well, they just tend to want to be authoritarian and that's what it is. Well, and if you like. say something, they're like, we're saving lives, oh, we're protecting lives. And I'm like. In this case, you're just being an idiot. I had a mask on, and I had it. I mean, who's to say which side is right anyway? I mean, right. You know, I have my head, my mouth covered. Yeah. yeah. That's so terrible. concerned for your, your welfare, and you said, well, stop killing your babies. That Start there, and then we'll talk. <laughs> That's a good point. Let's yeah. take a break. So, uh, Dad, we're not 
trained counselors, but oh. we've done a lot of counseling. <clears throat> I, I call it triage counseling, what we do. You just kind of, you know, you meet with somebody and say, hey, I know it's bad, but, you know, things can get better. Uh, l- let's get you to somebody a professional. One of our sponsors is a, a group called uh, Faithful Counseling. And oh. look, I, I mean, counseling was a big part of mine and Lisa's uh, redemptive story. And there's a wonderful counselor here locally that helped us. So, uh, I'm, I'm really high on spiritual counseling. And so I want to encourage you guys, somebody may have some problems in your marriage, may have other issues, uh, financial issues. This is a, a great group to be able to do this because you may not be in a place where you have a good counselor that's nearby. You can learn to be content. That's exactly right. And, and sometimes it takes a guide to get there. So, yep. What you can do is uh, to get 10% off your first month from our sponsor, Faithful Counseling, you go to faithfulcounseling.com slash unashamed. That's faithfulcounseling.com slash unashamed. You're going to fill out a questionnaire. They're going to assess what your needs are, and they're going to match you with a counselor that you'll love. So it's faithfulcounseling.com slash unashamed and get some help. Yeah, that's my theory. That's, That's not... The friendly, the, they used to call it the friendly skies. Not so friendly. Yeah, that was a slogan. The fly, the friendly skies. Yeah, not so friendly anymore. But the, whoever the airline, the best ad campaign for all airlines. I've said this before. Was the one that just said, "We'll get you. We'll there. get you there." <laughs> that's right. That that's all I want. <laughs> that's right. Look, just say nothing. Do nothing. Give me. I don't want your bag of pretzels or whatever. <laughs> just get me there. Just get me. And don't be rude while you're doing it. So, so uh, I preached a sermon Sunday called "Don't Miss the Point," and it was actually from Romans nine, ten, and eleven. And I kind of just did a kind of a high flyover of this text, and we've been talking about it on the podcast. We wrapped it up uh, last time, but it was interesting because so many people have missed the point that Paul was making in there, which is was kind of the whole idea behind my sermon. And I, I said, Jason, in the beginning that there's a there are reasons why people miss the point. One is, and this happens a lot to dad, you can't hear. You know, somebody's making a point, but if you don't hear it, you, you don't get it, right? I mean. Maybe you know, there's a reason Jesus said many times, he who has ears, <laughs> let, him, let hear. him hear. It's over and over and over. So one, of my, one of my favorite uh, Carl Allison stories, he was our old mentor, uh, Carl. <clears throat> And uh, Lori, his daughter, was my assistant at the church. And she went and she was like, I was standing right behind her. And she, she just said, hey, Dad, we have cake in the break room, you know, because it was somebody's birthday. And Carl looked up and he's just like, I mean, just come, you know, he was like something struck him, you know, and he was like, there's a snake in the break room. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> he was like he was ready to go kill a snake and i mean Lori and i got so tickled i was like that's how you sometimes you miss the point if you don't hear things quite properly and then i showed a video jays that you would have loved it was our old friend so because i thought i think it's like something funny about missing the point you know and so i thought of a couple of my own stories and i said i'll just google it so i just googled missing the point humor and about the third thing that came up on the Google was our old friend Jeff Walling. Oh, really? Yeah, and he was telling a story when he was preaching somewhere. It was like a youth thing. And so, like, 50 kids came forward to be baptized at the end of it. And he said, you know, the people, the, these faithful people that were setting up the event, they had six sets of clothes oh, for, for, him, 50 people. for 50 yeah. people to change into <clears throat> So he said what he was doing, so they were getting in a line to get baptized. Well, he said every time a kid would come out, they would change their clothes, they had a little change in there, and they would hand him the clothes, and he would run around the thing to give it to the next kid. So Can you put on wet clothes? I guess so. Yeah. So he's just, he said, I'm just running. You couldn't you know. do that now. No, you could. So he's running around this thing. He said, you know, I'm just breathless. And he said, you know, we're baptizing, all these kids are getting baptized. He said, and some guy runs up to the stage. He says, uh, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. He said, you know, Jeff, he says, I have these wet clothes in my hands. I'm trying to get these kids done. He said, uh, from where I was sitting, I could see number 37 didn't go all, his arm didn't go under. It was, it didn't go under the water. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Wally is like, he said, I'm looking at this guy because I'm running around trying to get these kids thing. And he's like. Okay, so I, I, I appreciate yeah, so, that's you've missed you've missed <laughs> Jesus you've right. missed the heart we've got to the baptism <laughs> and a pinky. Right. 
<laughs> was out of the water. Yeah. He didn't bury. That's right. That was, so the guy was like, what are we going to do about it? And Jeff said he was leaving. And he said, sometimes God just gives you what to say. He looked around. He said, trust Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then he said he went back around. And everybody's laughing because he's telling the story. And then he says, but I have to tell you, you know, I have legalistic roots. He said, sometimes at night I have a nightmare where this kid walks up and he says, and he only has one arm and he says, I'm number 37, <laughs> which was a great story. But it was yeah. it was really good about the idea that sometimes you can look at something and miss the point of what it is. And so so basically Romans 9 through 11 is the Jews missing the point of, of what they were created for, what their purpose was. You know, his, Paul ba- makes this whole argument that you above everybody else should be the ones that understand Jesus. Mm-hmm. And he even came in their era, but they totally missed him. And they missed all the signs and they missed all, you know, he does all those verses. And it's interesting because we, you know, we had Gary Glenn and we were talking about all the different texts that are in there, but I, I hadn't thought about it, but I started looking at who Paul used either from a text or just an illustration. And let's listen to the people he used. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hosea, Joel, Malachi, Elijah, Job, and David. I mean, that's pretty much the who's who yeah. of the of the entire Old Testament. Hall of faith. That's exactly right. And yet the point was that they missed was all these people were pointing to Jesus. And yet you missed him. You know, somehow you yeah. missed him. So it was really interesting. And so my point, of course, ultimately was do people miss Jesus today? And the answer is still oh, yes. Man. I mean, because of all these issues. Last night, you know, we got back from Colorado and they had the finale for the chosen season two. I believe it was Sunday night. So it's been a couple of days. And so we watched it late last night, but I had that same, I didn't know this is what we were talking about today. Cause I've obviously been gone, but it was in that realm and I won't get too far into it. Cause if you haven't seen it, I don't want to ruin it for you. Cause it's more of a, you're not sure how this is going to happen or where it's going. But it was really about that, the, all the surrounding you, you know, cast of individuals from every race and group and religious group. For Jesus to try to bring these people together, that was the struggle. They were missing the point of that it's not this crew against this crew yeah. or this. That's why right, right in the middle. <clears throat> Of his dissertation, right in the middle, brothers, you get to Romans 10. Yep. My heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Since, since they did not know the righteousness that comes from God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. And here's the, the point they missed. Christ is the end, the culmination of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Mm-hmm. So he basically clarifies the entire book of Romans right there. That's right. Christ well, is the end of it. Well, it's I'll, over. I'll tell you this one scene, because this, this is not really giving anything away, but there was some Pharisees that had gathered up and they're like, I mean, they're, they're fixed to have a big meeting that cause they were gathering. It was in, in prep for one of Jesus's big moments in, in his ministry. And they were like, well, let's just, na- what are the facts that uh, about this guy? And so they were going down through the facts. They're like, All right, I heard him out of his mouth say he was the son of man. And the other one said, but he also said he, he was the fulfillment of a prophecy from Daniel. And they were like, oh, who is this guy? And then they're like, he's done multiple miracles on the Sabbath. <laughs> they were like, yep, okay, that's fact. He he did that. And then it's like, now they said, well, what do we think we know? You know, they had the facts. Yeah. Like, we're pretty sure that he actually has women in his following. In his inner circle. circle. Yeah. 
They were like, and look, one of them's an Ethiopian. <laughs> and they're like, well, one of them has a terrible, whatever they called her, you know, yeah. terrible past. And then it's like, he has a zealot following him and a tax collector. And the other one said, oh, that's not just anything. He's been seen at having meals together with, degenerates and other tax collectors and it's like once you i mean they really did a fantastic mm -hmm. job because they were just like pouring it on and pouring it on and i was like you talking about missing the point yep they had missed the point that god whatever god they were serving was not for everyone yep. it, they were too far gone yeah to be reached yep. and, and which is the whole point let's take a break One of my favorite sponsors, Jay, is Tommy John Underwear. They've got big news. They've got a new, um, it, they're calling it their most advanced men's underwear yet. It's called Apollo. It's got a dry-release fabric blend uh, that's going to help with sweating, which would be really good for summertime, you know, just to kind of help wick out that moisture that sometimes so develops. Let me, let me translate what you said. Necessity. <laughs> That's right. Necessity. Louisiana, <laughs> July. That's right. Essential. You, you need you're playing golf. Oh, you're on the golf course. You need some underwear that don't bunch up on you. Uh, they've sold over 15 million pairs of underwear. So obviously these guys know what they do. They're wonderful. It's a great product. Right now you get 20% off your first order. If you go to TommyJohn.com slash Phil, TommyJohn.com slash Phil, 20% off. See their site for details. That's tommyjohn.com slash Phil. Well, and <clears throat> one of the things I read, Jay, which was really interesting in, in Hebrews 11, at the end of it, he, you know, all those great people, in which most of them I, I just mentioned are in Romans 9 through 11. These people were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. So they didn't even know exactly what their role was in the That's process. Right. That's right. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. And then, of course, in, in 12, 4, he says, Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith. So I made the point that, you know, these these the people that, that were so great in the Old Testament, they didn't even understand exactly how they fit into no. the plan, but they just did it anyway because yeah. they trusted God. Which he said, that's what I want. I mean, his own apostles sitting there listening to him when he would tell them, I'm going up to Jerusalem, the chief priests and the teachers of the law are going to mock me, hand me over to the Gentiles. They're going <clears> to <throat> beat the fire. I mean, I'm going to die in three days. I'll be raised from the dead. Even his apostles all the way to the cross were saying, yeah. do what? Yeah. They didn't get it. And even <clears throat> when he was leaving, remember, uh, they had seen him resurrected. They said, is this when we're going to restore Israel to power? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. you guys, come on. I mean, like <laughs> this whole fat time I've been telling you. But we made the point that they never understood that it wasn't. They were only thinking Israel was going to be saved. They missed the point that God said, no, the whole world has the opportunity. In lieu of your, 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 your statement, on how they missed it, on the missing the point. I mean, you just think about it. They, 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 they just couldn't put it together. Mm. And and I used the term. I said he was hiding in plain sight. That's right. But, but they couldn't see it. Well, Jason said this before. If he came today, in the modern world, did well a bunch of people would miss him again. They, they oh. for the same reasons. It wouldn't be. No doubt it about wouldn't it. be holy enough. It wouldn't be big enough. It well, wouldn't be. that's right. You forget the last. <laughs> paragraph in matthew which also they had an awesome deal on the chosen about matthew and jesus because matthew who was a tax collector yeah so they have him kind of the, the guy they have the the way they've created that character is really awesome. good, good. well he's socially awkward because he's kind of on the autism scale like kind yeah. of is what yeah. he acts like you yeah. would be socially yeah. awkward back there if you were a tax collector but look how many tax collectors have you met Guess what? They're socially awkward. <laughs> I'm sorry if you're a tax collector. But the IRS. Let me just have just an, talk to anyone yeah. with the IRS, and you're like, what in the world? <laughs> How do you feel about the IRS? What's your first impression? Mm. Oh, okay. So if you're like, you know what? One day I'm going to grow up, and I'm gonna I be aspire a to be a tax collector. Well, guess what? You're socially awkward. <laughs> but in Matthew 28, 
the last paragraph. Now, you just think of what's happened here. This is the whole life of Jesus, all the miracles, the death, the burial, the resurrection. They see the resurrected Lord. And in verse 16 of 28, it says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. Look, when they saw him, they worshipped him. And you just stop right there, and you're thinking, how could you not be any more convincing in, in your ministry in accomplishing God's scheme of redemption? redemption. They saw you, him die. They were there. You're when now he... looking at a once dead human who's evidently has some power. I mean, there's no doubt. Which he had told them over and over and over. So they worshiped him, which I thought awesome because now yeah. they're on the mountain. They're not in the church building. I've used this before. They had a worship experience here spontaneously. Then nobody the little was word, worried about how. They were focused on who. Then the little word, but. But some doubted. Yeah. You're Here we still go. doubting at this point? <laughs> and I love what Jesus said in that context of some worshiping and some doubting. But guess what? In our churches today, every Sunday, there are people worshiping and there are people doubting. You're sitting beside people doubting yep. and you're worshiping. You are correct. You, there's doubters and there were, it's not going to go away. And then Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go make disciples, which this is the point that was missed, of all nations. That's right. He was trying to get them to see over and over and over, and the whole book of Romans is about it. Right. I mean, if you just get that one concept, it'll help you understand the book of Romans and God's scheme of redemption. He was trying to win everyone. He's after everyone. That's why they had missed Jesus, the point about why he was taking the worst of the worst. From the best of the best to the worst of the worst. I mean, they were all there. And I said that's why that that Paul used uh, Elijah as his illustration, who would be known as the most fearless prophet in the history of Israel, Elijah. I mean, the stuff he did, the way he did it, his style, we talked about that, the way he, I mean, he was a man that trusted God. And yet at the end of the day, he sat under that broom tree and he doubted. He yeah. said, no, I'm the only one left. Just take me. You know, I was just, there's no point in me being here anymore. I mean, he had a moment. Yeah. He, he had a doubt moment. And God said, nope, I got 7,000 you don't even know about. And so, again, that was back to the thing. Elijah are thinking, say what? Yeah. yeah. Where are they? Well, I could have used them. <laughs> back there. I, the, I mean, it's hard. Look, the other night when I was doing that event, we just opened up the meet and greet to everybody. And I pretty well took 1,000 pictures in a span of two hours. Well, one of the guys came up there, and I'm making conversation with everybody. And you meet special people there. I mean, I, I met a, a young girl named Samantha, and she had cleft hands and feet. I'd never seen any. Like my daughter has a cleft palate. This girl had cleft feet and hands. She just had two two fingers on both her hands, kind of shaped like the the Spock greeting yeah, like that, and right. her feet were the same way. Wow. She had the greatest attitude of anybody I've ever met. She's probably a 10 or 12-year-old girl. And I was like, look, you you inspire all of us adults. Yeah. So you have all these conversations, and I'm looking for that because Jesus taught me that. In amongst all his world vision, the Gospels are filled with these one-on-one -on -one encounters. Mm -hmm. And so to help me get over my shyness and timidity and just nervousness about being in front of people I always just focus on these individual interactions but this guy the, the story i want to tell this guy comes up there and he's like man i just appreciate everything y'all do you know and i i'm a i'm an alcoholic and he's like i've struggled with all that and so i was like well now we're high on jesus and and everything's going well and he's like well uh, and I said, oh, I said, how long have you been sober? And he said, I'm high right now. <laughs> 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 Look, he got teared up, you know, and he's like, I'm sorry, man. And I was like, oh, boy. I said, we need an invitation song because I was trying to like. Because you're like working the line. It's hard to get in depth. Yeah, I mean, everybody gets about 30 <laughs> seconds. But now he's convicted because yeah. I basically put him on the spot, which I, I didn't know that. I mean, you were just he, assuming he, he was, was thinking this. He was like, yeah. you know, I was an alcoholic and 
And uh, so I said, well, hang, look. Hang on, just, let's take a break. I said, look, man, you you know, I, I'm not sure. Maybe you're subconscious. Because then I realized, okay, yeah, this guy's lit up like a kite. I'm not sure what he's on. But I was like, look, you can be forgiven. We're, we're, this is great. Maybe, maybe God yeah. led you to this point. You know, I'm fixed to explain Jesus in detail. Of course he got all choked up and he, but he, the word he kept mentioning was doubts. He kept saying, I have all these doubts. I have all these doubts. And so I thought of this passage. I was like, look, there's a thin line between gathering up, worshiping and doubting. It's because here they all were at yep. the right place. Right. I said, but it's a, it's a one day at a time. And realize that God is supplying the power, not you, because we have a tendency to doubt for whatever reason. It's just universal. Right, Look around. Right. And, you know, when uh, when Paul mentions the Elijah story in Romans 11, 2 through 4, when he gets to 5, he says, So, too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. So this never changes. There's going to be way more that reject than embrace. But then he says, and if by grace it cannot be based on works, if it were based on works, grace would no longer be grace. Yep. And so I, so my point was, not only did the Jews miss their special election, their purpose, which was to bring Jesus to the whole world, they also missed law and grace because they kept wanting to revert back to it. And, I, and we've talked about this before. I think it's the biggest thing people miss even now that Jesus has been on the earth. They still keep wanting to go back under law. I mean, they don't want it because it just sounds too good to be true. It's like, what? well, there was a point last night in, in that episode. They also mentioned this. I think Matthew asked Jesus, he was like, well, why do you use so many parables and, and riddles? And because he was like, as a tax collector, he was a numbers man. Yeah. He's like, I don't, I don't like the, uh, he didn't say irony. He said the, uh, forgot what the word they used, but that was what he was referencing when, when he was looking at these parables and these illustrations yeah. like salt and light. And right. so why, why, why are you using that? And, you know, Phil did a class one time called, I believe you called it directional dialogue. Yep. Yep. And Jesus was a master at taking something tangible on the earth. Yep. And, and he's turn- talking to this group. But the really, he's after the ones right over there. That's right. Well, and he's using light, water, yeah, whatever, salt as, as illustrations <clears throat> to something spiritual. He's taking something physical, or which Luke fifteen is a great example of that. Because remember, it starts out saying the Pharisees were saying he eats with sinners, and so he tells the three parables, and it's really aimed at the Pharisees. Yeah, but it's right. all about lost things being found. See what I mean? It was a great directional dialogue teaching because that's who he was aiming it at. They were the older brother. Way back in Romans 2, if you call yourself a Jew, if you rely on the law and brag brag about your relationship to God, if you know his will, if you approve of what is superior because you are instructed by the law, if you're convinced that you're a guide for the blind, he's covering everything that they, on how they missed it. Uh, For those who are in dark, an instruction of the foolish, foolish, a teacher of infants, because you have in the law the embodiment of knowledge and truth. You then who teach other, do you teach yourself? Mm-hmm. So he he just says, you've got all these claims, right? But I'm looking at you. How come you didn't get this? How come you didn't understand that the law is over? Right. Jesus is the end of it. And so, I made the point Sunday that I he think made every argument you can make. The reason why Paul was so passionate about this text is because he was the chief misser of the point. I mean, you talk about a guy that missed the point. He when he was Saul, he he self righteously thought that killing people and terrorizing them was his God ordained mission. Plus, he put the fault on the Jewish people themselves. He said. God's name is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you, right? The way you operate, right? He said you 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 you're doing a bad thing, even for the Gentiles. Well, remember, he started this whole section by saying, "I wish I were I wish I were lost, if it, yeah. if it meant you could be saved." Yeah. And I, I said Sunday, I was like, you know, I've said a lot of things preaching and teaching. I've never said that about yeah. anybody. I mean. That's how anguished he was about. You're talking about splitting hairs. They had it down to an art form. Yeah. Um, to make themselves look good, you know. And 
Oh yeah, they missed it. Yep. I mean, and that was the whole they point. They missed it. And so, so the I'm gonna read you this section from Romans 10 because you know this is how they missed it. But I want you to look at how how Paul lays it out. This is that text in Romans 10 9. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. And I made the point that it, this is simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. I mean, that sounds pretty simple. You know, I'm just, I'm not going to be in charge of my own life. I'm going to submit myself to Jesus and I'm going to follow him. Yep. It's a simple You path. can find that. You can find that. But it doesn't mean it's easy. But it, I think that's but, why he did use, Jesus did use parables and illustrations is because to those who are searching, when you search and and try to figure out why would Jesus make these illustrations, that is giving you a new picture of what God is really like. You just think when you're no longer open minded, when you think you got it figured out, that's the most dangerous ground to be on. Right. And I think that's why it is somewhat complex from the outside looking in, because a lot of people hear all these stories and they're just like, what? It, it seems too complex or, and this Bible is so big, but it only has one point. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. And people are like, oh, well, what is that point? We always jokingly say, start with Jesus and go from there. I mean, he is the point because that is how you have the image of this God that you're trying to have a relationship with. Yeah. And, and, and again, it's it's a simple path if if you're willing to embrace it. Let's take yeah. our last break. And then he says in verse eleven, anyone as Scripture says, anyone who believes in Him will never be put to shame. We talked a lot about that. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all, and richly richly blesses all who call Him. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord be saved. It's so, for everybody. It's for everybody. And so the idea of bringing Jew and Gentile together, the great mystery says, is the same simple solution to what we see today. We're, we're living in the most divided culture since the Civil War, yeah. and we know the answer. I mean, you're colorblind if you believe And they this. got there by turning their back on what we are discussing today. That's exactly that's right. That's how we arrived at that's where we are. That's how we arrived, and that's how people— Because they didn't think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God. He gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. That's right. what he starts with in Romans, right. and it's truth. It is, and so so I so I kind of close with the idea that now we're all in ministry together, because in Second Corinthians five, he says we are we are ministers of reconciliation. Therefore, we're Christ ambassadors, and so that's mm -hmm. we've got this purpose. We understand that's what we do, and so it's just like we had Samuel on the last podcast. Here's a man who was lost, who was confined who was, you know, from everybody, from a worldly perspective. Basically written off. Written off and, and had no future, and this guy will never do anything. And then when Jesus gets a hold of him, he spends now his life mentoring, leading people. It's, it's a paying a forward of grace. And he's trying to help the 17-year-olds that he once was and ended up in prison for 25 years. Exactly. So, so therefore, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So, it really, is that's what that's why Paul said we're created to do good works. Now, that's what we do. But it's not to get to heaven. I mean, getting to heaven came because of Jesus. You know, because yeah. of our trust in Him. That's so, why the cross really, when you have, when you think of the cross as being an intersection, a a literal cross. Yeah. yeah. I think the reason God chose that emblem is because you have your sin crossed with his righteousness in that moment. Hmm. I mean, that is the intersection of humanity. Yeah. Which is maybe that's not why he chose the cross, but I, I think like that. That's a good reason. Yeah. God made him well, who that, had that's the verse. no sin yeah. to be sin for us. us. So that That's the in him we might become the righteous. That's pretty good, Jay. I've always said it was when our right. story intersects his story, and that happens at the cross because yep. that's where everything is taken care of. So at the end of my sermon, I said, you know, like you do as a preacher. So I, you know, I'm laying out Paul's whole argument, you know, and it's sort of a I wouldn't call it an intellectual sermon, but you know, that's a, that text is big and broad. So I'm laying out the point. So I get to the end, and of course, you, you know, you got an audience of people listening to you and people listening online. It's like, so what's the point 
to you? I mean, what does what does any of this have to do with you? Because if you preach a sermon and have anything to do with the people that are listening, you, you hadn't done a very good job. And I said, don't miss Jesus. And so I'll go into the whole thing. And so I, I tell the story about I preached the Sunday before, and when Sage came home, Phyllis and them were there, and they had been over where, where you were on the 4th, and they said, who preached today? And she said, well, Pap and some other guy, meaning Kellett, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> sorry, Kellett. And they said, well, what did he preach about? And she said, well, he said he was raised by teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what that she, that's what she told. Well, I said that in the sermon. I said, I'm lucky to be alive because I was raised by teenagers. I was oh, talking about mom. That's all she got. That's all she got, which Emma was right. The illustration was more powerful. The, the, the lesson was about freedom, but she got that. So I said, so here's what I, so that was my six-year-old granddaughter. So I don't want, if anybody asks you today, what did the preacher preach about? I said, what are you going to say? You know, Kurt Lively said, don't miss Jesus. <laughs> 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 and he got it. I was like, Kurt is right. We don't want to miss Jesus because you can miss him. And then I use some illustrations. Like I said, you know, you're in a 12 step program. You were addicted to drugs and you go in there and finally you got some structure in your life. You got some community and people are helping. You think, man, celebrate recovery has saved my soul. Nope. If you believe that, you miss Jesus. And so I was like, Jesus is the only saver of souls. And then I just went through some different things, mission work, all the things people can get into. Yeah, and you're not saying those things aren't good. No, they're all great. Yeah. But I but, mean, people that, 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 because people have told me before that they're like, well, people get off drugs without Jesus. I'm like, yep, they do. There's some, some groups out there mm -hmm. that do wonderful work, and I'm all for it because it gives them a clearer mind. To find Jesus. To find Jesus. But if you want your sins removed and you want to get off the planet via the resurrection, now we we have a set of circumstances that you can't help. That's right. Now, you can help them be a, a functioning member of society, and we appreciate it. It's like Dad always says about you know fitness gurus. I mean, you can, man, you can get that body fine-tuned, and that means you're going to die healthy. Yeah, I mean, a great, great line. It's a great line. I think I use it every speech I give. <laughs> That's exactly know? right. Everybody goes on a hole in the ground, the, the, the beefed up and the ones not so. Right. Yeah. It was an interesting contrast when I was in Colorado because, you know, it's kind of become famous, and I made a few jokes about being high on marijuana because they're, you know, it's legal pretty much there. And so here's this festival I'm at, and it was faith-based, Jesus-centered. 1,500 people shows up. So when I'm coming back from the hotel, this guy said, look, I'm going to take you to the, the hippie community. Uh -oh. Just they, they, They're just squatters yeah. down by the river. And so when Hippie we hollow. We came, yeah, when we came down the hill, I would say there was about the same amount that was at the festival. Because we, we almost ran over two people who were obviously high. Cause we, <laughs> they were just walking down the middle of the road. And uh, and the woman, you know, I was looking head high, uh, if you can follow me. Because I, I guess that these communities, <laughs> clothes are optional. And you and, didn't want to determine what body type she had and yeah. had to tell Missy. But I'm telling you this, because what was strange about it is because I looked at it, they, all these people at the hippie gathering – this, the dope smoking deal, they all look like me. All the males. <laughs> just they did. I thought, well, these, I, I could fit right in here from a physical. Just take your standpoint. clothes off and jump on in, Jay. And at my speech, <laughs> most people didn't. They were yeah. clean shaved. I made my little joke about there's a place for clean shaven. So I, I said, there's a place for smooth faced people in our world. It's called the ladies' room. They always <laughs> laugh, you know. And the guys are like, well, what's he trying to say? I'm like, God gave you this. You're in one of the coldest environments in the world, and you're shaving the warmth. That's a how, you need to repent of that before we ever get to Jesus. Have you missed the point of the beard? There you go. But that contrast was was so. So interesting, yeah. you know. Here we are, just right beside each other, yeah. two big groups of people, and one we're getting high on Jesus, the other we're smoking, smoking crack or whatever, yeah. smoking pot. So don't miss Jesus. Here's what I close: Don't miss Jesus. Don't miss grace, because man, people have missed that. You know, yeah. they they put they want to put the works back on. They want to hold some of the law. And then the last one was don't miss your purpose. Because remember the Jews. They their purpose was to to bring physical Jesus 
the Messiah to the planet and they missed the purpose. And so I said, you know, if you say, well, you know, I just, I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't really know my purpose. I mean, I love Jesus and I follow him. I was like, you're in good company because everybody that was around before Jesus, they didn't know what they were doing either. Yeah. But you just trusted him anyway. What's amazing is Jesus, as far as lineage goes, he was, he was, and is a Jew. That's right. This is exactly right. I mean, and so are all the people. You that, would think. So are all would, the people they, that we that wrote the Bible. You, know? you would think they would make the connection and said, I know. these are all Jews. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they missed it. So, you know, it really does make a good application, I think, to us. that. And he said that in, in chapter 11. He said, look, don't get conceited and okay. say, ah, oh, these Jews. You know, he said, look, they were the original shoot and you got grafted into that so you just better thank god every day you need to be afraid don't don't be be boasting about it but to your point a lot of people there are like i don't know what i'm supposed to do i don't know what god wants me to do and for those people you you got to remember colossians 3 23 because paul same writer of romans made a made a valid point when he said whatever you do that's right whatever you work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men, since you know you'll receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving, which is the point. Whatever you do, that that becomes your purpose right. is to highlight Jesus in that service. But don't you think, Jace, that one of the greatest pleasures of what we get to do by traveling around speaking is running across people that are doing something different than we're doing, but God's getting glory out of it and they're helping people. I mean, I love exactly. the stories of the people I run across, like the butcher you are talking about. I mean, all these people, yeah. you find them, you're like, you know, they're doing something totally different than what I'm doing, but they're helping people, they're paying forward grace, and that's what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.